This is the year of individual expression, of todayness, of a vibrant, youthful current flowing through the people of this great nation of ours. And this is the year of the Camaro. The car of today. Up art, the superhero, competitive sports and competitive dancing. Action sports and action style. Reflections of fun-loving, action-seeking times. Of course, we don't all have to participate. Most of us can be observers. We don't have to take up karate or dance the frug. We don't have to go all out for every extreme expression of these times to be a part of them. I'm something of a sideline observer myself. My name is Milton Caniff. You probably know me better as the creator of Steve Canyon. You know, when you draw a strip like this every day for 25 years, you've got to keep up with the changing scene. Reflect what people are doing and thinking and wearing and saying. And in general, stay with it. This younger way of thinking didn't crop up overnight. It's natural outgrowth of prosperous times. People no longer are content to buy something less than what they really want. To give the people what they want, Chevrolet offers this car for 1967. The newest shape on wheels. A car in tune with today. The Camaro didn't develop overnight either. It has long been a Chevrolet tradition to introduce new styling and design concepts. Remember Chevrolet Nomad? One of the many dream cars embodying ideas that found their way into production models. In this case, it represented a fresh approach to station wagon styling. The original Impala evolved in a similar manner to become the world's largest selling model. Hard top styling. The 1950 Chevrolet Bel Air Sports Coupe was the first in its field. Modern bucket seats introduced with the 1953 Corvette the first true American sports car. Here's the XP700, among other concepts that pioneered the popular short rear deck long hood look that characterized the Corvette Stingray, which has created so much excitement in the sports car world. Chevrolet's super sport concept led the way to a family of SS models, including the front running SS396. The car in your future may well be represented by a line here or a detail there. A basic concept that at the moment is a dream on paper. A single idea car or a show car. Some of these ideas are years ahead of their time and when a decision is made to translate them into a production model, it usually takes about three more years of intensive work. It was really no different with the Camaro. Some of its engineering features and styling notions can be traced back through the years. But the basic idea to build this unique car came in early 1964. Of course, discussions had gone on much before that date. This is Mr. Don McPherson, chief engineer, passenger car, Chevrolet. It's not quite as simple as somebody in research and development gazing out the window and saying, we need a new sporty four-passenger car. Nor is it a matter of an artist setting a line down on a sketch pad. This is Mr. Dave Holes, group chief designer, Chevrolet. It does start with a little crystal gazing, but the crystal ball of the Chevrolet team is made up of market studies, surveys, the response of the motoring public to current models, plus idea show cars, buying and spending patterns, and other such indicators of the future. In this respect, the public is partner to the automobile designer. When it became apparent that public interest was growing in a small, distinctive, sports personal car, an experimental project was launched to design a car to best fit that need. At first, it was known simply as the XP-836. I don't pretend to know much about engineering, but I do know something about art, and industrial design, and sculpture. These creative processes team up with creative engineering to design a new automobile. The engineer designs the mechanical and construction aspects. The stylist designs the appearance, concerning himself with form, texture, and color, all for the exterior and the interior of the car. Of course, there's a great deal of overlap because it's a team effort, you know. Since automobiles are designed around people, 
One of the first steps is to design a seating package. That's Oscar, sitting in for thousands of owners to be. The best seat height and seating angle are not just for Oscar's comfort, but to make him more efficient behind the wheel. Does he have ample leg room, hip room, shoulder room, and head room? These are important questions to be answered. How well can he see in front, at the sides, and in the rear? As the basic seating package takes shape, exterior styling begins. Initially, stylists are given free reign. Each stylist interpretation is considered. Eventually, a styling concept begins to emerge. The byword becomes, don't just try to be different, try to be right. Come up with an honest look, clean, sleek, no tinsel or gingerbread, nothing contrived, a direct approach to design that will be in style for years. Look right in any setting and have its own distinct personality. While one group works on exterior design, another concentrates on interiors. Appearance inside must be in keeping with appearance outside. Instruments must be clustered for quick reference, easy to read, nicely recessed and set against a black background to minimize glare. Controls located close at hand, no unnecessary reaching. Since function and appearance go hand in hand, engineers are in every step of the way. At first, it is dream engineering. The dream, a car easy to steer, easy to maneuver, easy to park, with flat cornering, no excessive lean, and a design that adds up to safety. Eventually, dreams on paper evolve into one design. Still on paper, computers evaluate the engineering approach of the new car. Fed such basic information as the size of the car, its weight distribution, center of gravity, and wheelbase dimensions. The computer comes up with the best combination of such factors as roll axis, roll distribution, roll stiffness, ride rate, front end geometry, and so on. But skilled engineers must still come up with the right answers. A case in point, based on computer information, engineers came up with single leaf rear springs. Simple, practical, ideal for the characteristics of this particular design. This unique computer program is the first where the overall driving behavior of the car in motion is predicted on paper. Two-dimensional drawings must be translated into three-dimensional clay models. In the case of the XP836, it is decided to go to a full-size clay mock-up. Styling is refined and the final package shape determined. At this point, the project gets the green light. It is to go into production. A new automobile is composed of new parts, thousands of them. Each part must be designed and perhaps redesigned several times. These men engineer parts seemingly out of nothing. Wood, clay, plastic, sometimes metal. Whatever material is best suited to their needs. Another use for computers is to produce prototype parts. Design information is fed into the computer, which in turn operates a machine which produces the part. Any changes are programmed into the computer and incorporated into the finished product. While this is going on, mock-ups of parts and components are fitted into a wooden framework of the F-car. Meanwhile, actual components are studied. Will they go together properly? Will they work together? Concealed in the familiar bodies of current models, these components are subjected to thousands upon thousands of driving miles, both on the proving grounds and around the country. Then they are torn down and examined carefully. And they are subjected to exhaustive testing, sometimes put through millions of cycles, more than they will ever be called upon to operate during the life of the car. The last touches of styling and trim detail are considered on a full-scale fiberglass model. It won't run, but it looks enough like the real thing to fool an expert. Prototypes that do run are next on the schedule. Time for the showdown. Will the car live up to expectations? Again, the test miles pile up. Day and night, around the clock, rugged testing. 
far exceeding the driving demands made on the average car. Electronic brains correlate the results of the tests. But human brains pass judgment. The results? The F car meets or exceeds all expectations. You know, here at Chevrolet Styling, we live and breathe new ideas, take things pretty much in stride, and yet this design captures everyone's imagination. To people sensitive to design, the Camaro is a good, honest piece of sculpture. From any angle, the car has a dynamic shape, the look of the day, with no compromises and no excuses. It's quite a contrast from the flat or slab-sided look or the squared-off boxy look. These aerodynamic lines were subjected to extensive tests in a jet aircraft wind tunnel. The Camaro is truly a product of the space age. It has what the stylists call roll under for a lean look. And the curved side glass and roof give it a lot of what we call tumble home. That slanted in feeling at the top. Tumble home and roll under are key design elements in the cylindrical shape of the car. A trend-setting shape considered an ideal approach to modern automotive design. To the engineer, the beauty of the Camaro extends under the skin. This is Mr. Alex Mayer, director of engineering, oh, Chevrolet Motor quite Division. An interest in this car. We feel we have managed to incorporate the ideal of simplicity with the goal of the best possible engineering answer. Of course, the best answer was our primary concern, but often the simple answer proved best. Monoplate rear springs are a case in point. As the computer's prediction and subsequent road testing prove, single leaf rear springs are the best answer for this car. Simplicity, combined with excellent cornering and handling characteristics, reliability and roadability. Another example is the single tubular propeller shaft. One piece, no extra U-joints needed. The engine, transmission, front suspension, Brakes and steering gear and linkage are built as a unit. The front frame is secured to the body through four rubber isolated mounts, isolating the passenger compartment from engine and front suspension road noises. And of course, the rear suspension is rubber isolated too. It's the right approach for this car, the best of two approaches. Unitized construction at the rear and separate body and frame at the front. Here's something else. The wheels are set wide apart. It's what engineers call wide tread. While it gives the car that sports car look, it isn't done just for appearance sake. It's functional. A wide tread provides easier handling, better control in turns and around corners. Another unusual thing about the Camaro is that you will rarely see two alike. The Camaro is a beautiful collection of many distinctive details and special features. Beautiful. And that's just the basic car, the lowest price Camaro. Take a closer look. A complete car, fully equipped for fun. Who could want more? Well, lots of people. That's the whole point. We planned this car so that each buyer can tailor it to his individual taste. This is Mr. Bob Lund, Assistant General Sales Manager, Chevrolet. He doesn't have to buy special models and higher price series to get what he wants in his Camaro. One person, for instance, might want to dress up his Camaro with the style trim group. Still another person might favor the special interior group. Others might choose any one of a multitude of options and accessories. And some optional packages virtually give the buyer a different automobile. Look what happens when you add the Rally Sport option. Now the car takes on a whole new look. From full-width grille with concealed headlights, through livelier bright work accent, to distinctive rear end treatment. Now if a buyer chooses the SS350 option with a 350 cubic inch V8, the car takes on a still different look. 
special, wider, low-profile tires on wider wheel rims, put more tread on the road for traction and handling suited to the high-performance powertrain. The look of performance on the outside is matched with extra-duty chassis components under the sheet metal. Unusual styling touches, a special raised hood line, a distinctive paint band around the front grille. Here, the SS350 option is coupled with the Rally Sport option, but can be added to any Camaro with the 350 cubic inch V8. With this freedom of choice, the motorist builds the Camaro to fit his own needs, wants, and desires. In a manner of speaking, it's a do-it-yourself car. Imagine being invited to the General Motors Proving Grounds and being handed a car unlike any ever seen before, and then be given carte blanche to drive it any way you want to. Are you ready? Let's give it a try. This is Skip Hudson, sports car enthusiast and expert driver. I think the big thing about the Camaro is its rotability. You feel a real sense of positive control with this car. It does what you want it to, when you want it to. What Skip Hudson found with a prototype, test driver Bob Cliff proved out with a production model Camaro. Watch him put it through its paces, far beyond highway limits, which can only be done under safe, controlled, proving ground conditions. The Camaro story has no ending. It's just beginning. It really begins when you get behind the wheel.